Morning guys and gals, how are y'all today? So Slade with you today from Thought of the Fanchers. And as y'all can tell, I am at work. I'm going out here to the dumpster because I got a cardboard box here. And I have got a bunch going on. I y'all probably I hadn't I hadn't done a lot of videos here at the store lately, but the reason I hadn't done a lot of videos at the store lately is I have just been so dang busy. And to be honest, when I'm really busy, uh, it's just kind of hard to uh, break the old phone out and uh, and uh, video, but I've just, man. So we had a, a velvet season, September 15th, 16th, 17th. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I have had a ton of folks just in here getting bows and stuff ready for that. I've had lots of strings and cables to do. Uh, I have been selling bows like uh, like like crazy. So man, I have just been busy at the store. I love being busy at uh, at Owens Outfitters, but I also like bringing you guys all that stuff as well. So Friday, I got I got strings and cables in. I got that set. I got this set. Let's see, new string and cable ordered nine fifteen. So. Uh, I don't remember ordering that, but it says order 915, so I need to look back at that. Uh, and then also, I got a bow in here Saturday that I need to get strings and cables put on that. And then I got three more sets in. I got those two knocked out. So I'm going to try to get, get caught up on, uh, on those strings and cables there. And then, you know, in the retail world, I'm always getting a little bit of inventory in. So just before season opens, uh, October the 1st, I've got a lot of scent stuff out there now, but we got some nose jammer in. Believe it or not, I sell a good bit of that nose jammer. And if you don't know, that stuff right there will make your truck smell really good. Uh, QAD Exodus Broadheads. I, uh, I killed a bull with these back in probably I don't know, 2015, maybe. Love that broadhead. I love the shortness of the ferrule, okay? there. So I will show y'all this. So you, so you see how short that, that ferrule is? So obviously, it screws in to, to about right there. And then there's only that much sticking out of the air. Hey, that sucker flies like a dart. I uh, got those. But y'all know, this right here, tried and true you know i'll probably catch some hate or flack over this but for me for slade that broadhead right there has been absolute money i think i just killed my sixth maybe seventh uh bull elk with it i mean in the bull i killed this year was just a stud of a bull seven eight hundred pounds uh he was quartered away, hit him, you know, right where I was supposed to, drove all the way up through him. They fly really good. They are a little labor intensive because that little set screw. I may get some out here in a minute and do a little video on that. So that's that's kind of what I'm gonna be doing here at the store. I'll also show y'all, we are getting tons of stuff in. It's getting to be fall and then with Thanksgiving and Black Friday and Saturday and uh, Christmas time coming. So man, we got lots of new Orvis. I love these Orvis shirts uh, here. This shirt right here, y'all, I'm telling you, that shirt right there weighs dead gum two pounds. I mean, it is it is awesome. Love that. This is some new Dakota flannels that we've gotten in. Any of this stuff that you guys might, might want, just let me know. I can find you a size. Something I'm really liking. I mean, feel of that. I mean, the, the, the hand on that shirt is is just amazing it feels really good some more flannels there here as well that's 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 kind of a pullover this may be my favorite because i love that color so we got lots of new stuff so i'm gonna go back here and i'm gonna get on these uh these bows i'm gonna i'm gonna get some strings and cables done up and uh and i'm on uh I'll show y'all that, but before I get started, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna show you these pictures. So that picture right there. So that's the trip. This is a place where we just got back from hunting. But of course, the the man that owns the property, 
uh, he didn't have the cabin built at that time. So this was an old trailer, y'all. And I mean, when I'm telling you an old dilap dilapidated trailer, it was a dilapidated trailer. If you see dad and I, there's, uh, there's my bow, there's dad's bow. We got meat hanging all over the porch. A bull I had killed, a bull dad had killed. And I mean, that, there was no running water there. There was electricity there. We didn't have running water. Uh, but that, that was just, you know, seven or eight years ago. But man, I, I, I don't miss the old trailer, but I do miss the old trailer. <clears throat> this was, I think we were hunting the Ojo Feliz right there. There again is a picture of the old trailer. You see the old camouflage door. That was a stud bull I killed. He's, he's hanging at dad's. <clears throat> this was a hunt Aiden and I were on together. Y'all see my pictures. So I, this is back, you know, when we actually <clears throat> run, you know, made made pictures. Aiden, this bull was 32 yards and Aiden was right behind me and he had the range finder. And he's like, he's 32 yards, dad. So shot him. <clears throat> Julie and Ainsley were with me on this bull. Probably one of the biggest five points I've ever killed. He was just a hammer of a bull. So uh, I got him there. Uh, deer in Kansas, there's a deer dad killed. That was there at Mr. Uh, Curtis's place. So y'all heard dad talk about him and Tim Smith. So these two bulls right here were both at Daryl Stout's. This was at the Stout Amick uh, piece of property that, that he hunted uh, for a long time, 20 plus years. I got to go there a few years. Uh, this was in Meeker, Colorado. And I mean, those are, those are pretty respectable bulls for that ranch. You never saw a bunch of giant bulls, but the elk were there. That was at Mr. Curtis's, me and dad and Aiden. So this deer right here, Aiden killed when he was seven. And uh, we were with Jason Hollis and a day before, and I'll try to put some pictures. Two or three days before this, Aiden had a brutal dirt bike wreck and it's just a miracle of God that, that he survived uh, where the accident was on the inside of his leg next to his main artery there. Really, really, really scary. My, my, my dad was with him. Uh, deer I killed in... Knoxby County, there's a deer dad killed behind his house. Another deer from Knoxby County. This is one of dad's probably biggest, best eight points I ever. Killed him right there at his house. That was a fun time. I'm never sure I've seen him so excited. That deer there, a big drop tine deer. This was a bear dad killed in New Mexico that was eaten on a bear carcass. Again, that's the big five point that y'all saw over there a while ago. You see Aiden, he just a uh, little tight and then i will go over maybe my alaska book with you guys i got a book in here that's got all my alaska pictures arctic char my first caribou ever that drop tine deer is actually right here so cool story about this deer i'll have to sit down and tell y'all the, the story one day so anyway i just want to share that with y'all so i'm going to I'm gonna get after it and get working on some of these bows. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys something real quick. So <clears throat> probably on two different bows. So I have guys bring bows in here a lot, guys and gals, and they say, hey, do I need a new stringing cable? So this is, uh, I mean, sometimes that can be a hard question to answer, but I think I've done a video on this before. Strings get really thin, but kind of what I'm looking for, if you look right here, look. So you can tell where this string is coming apart, okay? It is, it is, it is cut. And I see this a lot. So if you see, this is the bow. And I think what causes this a lot right here is because this this bow is this string right here i'm not saying always but it's slapping a piece of clothing maybe a jacket or something like that and when that happens over and over and over i have seen it before it, it won't necessarily break a string but i see guys strings right there in that area really bad shape so if they shoot a lot you know once deer season opens and it gets to be winter time so obviously this guy needs a string uh I always look in the center of their D loop. His is in pretty good shape. Depending on if it's single cam or double cam, I look down here. Uh, this bow, especially single cams, do it a lot. 
Uh, this is a double cam, so it's not as bad, but if it was a single cam, you start seeing some serving separation there. It wears on the serving, and then it wears the serving in two, and then it starts wearing on the string. Let me let me see if I have one back here that might be that might be doing that. Uh, so yeah, so here you go. So if you look at this string, so you see the serving. The serving's right there at the end of my thumb. Okay, that serving used to come up. You see where that string changes colors there. He used to have serving all the way up till there, okay? Where this single cam rolls over and that, it don't have a module, but the quote unquote module hits this string, then that serving starts separating, okay? You gotta keep that serving pulled down and tight, okay? If you don't, it wears that serving in two. So at some point, the serving came completely in two. He unwrapped it up to right here you can tell where it was well now guess what now it don't have anything to protect the string so it is starting to wear in that string into so he needs a new string and cable another place i look for in the roller guard or the cable slide okay so i got ready to check this cable slide and watch this the first thing i felt was this look Look how loose that is. And then watch this. It just comes out, okay? Guys, I mean, we can't have that, okay? That's not good. You have to know when you're shooting your bow that this is loose, okay? I have to know that's loose like that. So I'm gonna look his set screw is, he's got a set screw here, right? Let me see if I can make it focus. He's got a set screw here and a set screw there. Both his set screws are gone. I may have one, but once I get the string and cable fixed, oh, I'll see if I can fix that. So anyway, y'all hear me say it over and over. We gotta do better guys. We got to do better than that. All right, and there you go. New string, new cable. I may change his cable slide. I don't know. It's got a, it's got a little groove cut in it right there in a little rough spot. I think I've showed y'all that before. But the first thing I got to figure out is how I can get his uh, his cable rod tightened up. So let me see if I got some screws. This is, this is pretty tight. And then we're gonna get this dude. We're gonna get it tuned up. You'll be ready to go. All right, so I got I got these big containers here and here and here. And I got tons of different size set screws. So that little bitty set screw right there and even more right there fit inside this riser just right. So I got one there. I got this one started, but I got to get it going. And I got one right here. You don't want to strip it in that aluminum. That's probably not even aluminum riser. But now, once I press it again, and that jugger's tight. Look at there. Ain't no movement. So now, I'll have a happy bow customer because his cable rod is gonna be right. Hey, Jordan. Hey, it's Slade at Owens Outfitters. How are you, man? Good. I'm just going to let you know I got your bow ready. You can pick it up at your convenience.
All right, sounds good. No rush. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. All right, guys, so probably one of the best-selling bows that Matthews ever had, and I'm just I'm just guessing, was the Switchback and the Switchback XT. So this is the... This is the regular switchback. The switchback XT was a little bit shorter. So I'm about to put strings and cables on it. We're going to get rid of these. They're really dry rotted. We're going to put some monkey tails on there. I love the monkey tails that, that Matthews makes. You see how these are melted and kind of all over the string. And what I was talking to y'all earlier about, so this guy just brought this bow in and I have the string and cable in stock for it. So if you look here right there, okay so his serving again it's it's his servants almost gone completely you can see the serving maybe way down here like behind my fingernail there and that serving again it, it would it would probably run up to uh, about right there but he has wore his servant out and then after time of wearing his servant out, then that's actually string. So he's about wore his string in two. Uh, so it's definitely time to get a new one. But besides that, I mean, if, if you look at that, I mean, it's just almost, the whole string's almost in, in, in two there. But besides that, I'm pretty sure this is the original string and cable on this bow. This bow's pushing 20 years old. So it needs new strings and cables. If you look here, his string suppressors, right there those are not terrible i have seen them that are all the way in too but i will put him some new string suppressors on both sides this one's not bad i'll probably leave that one on there so we're gonna we're gonna get this dude swapped out and uh get him going i don't know apparently somebody must have had a fall away rest that's just Again, that is sewing yarn, and it has enough super glue on it, guys. If you go to a bow shop, they use super glue in that bow shop for strings and for cables. Politely get your bow and uh, take it somewhere else. So let's get this thing swapped out. All right, guys. So it looks better in here than it did when I got here this morning. However, though. When bows are not hanging up, then we ain't making no money. But deer season is getting ready, so rolling in. So, you know, guys are coming to get their bows, and we're kind of getting stuff ready and and uh, and all that. So I really, this time of year, don't want to have as many bows uh, hanging back here as I did a month ago. I got I got this one in today. I'm on I'm on call, Matthews and get it done and i'm sure guys this is something i finished today so they'll they will uh they will roll in here pretty quick and get these fixed so up i'm about ready to call it a day so i'm gonna i'm gonna leave today i gotta i gotta go back to coker's uh y'all saw in yesterday's video where coker and i got all my uh my smoked sausage and my patty sausage done up but i didn't get my my uh smoked sausage that that we actually smoked i didn't uh i didn't i didn't get it put in uh bags because it was it still had a lot of moisture in it and that uh food processor sucks that out of there so we gonna put it in the refrigerator let it dry a little bit so i'm gonna go get that squared away this afternoon coker and i are gonna do that and then my elk trip will be officially 100 percent done so, uh, but I, I'm looking forward to it. We're going to have some great, great, great uh, meat to eat ourselves as a family. I've already brought a couple of packs and give a couple of fat packs to friends and family and stuff like that and kind of let everybody just enjoy the whole free range and uh, the elk meat. So, hope y'all enjoy today's video. We just got to keep getting better and better with our bows, guys. Take good care of your equipment. If you want your equipment to take care of you, you got to take good care of your equipment. Uh, don't don't ride your bow and crossbow quite so long. Get it into a, a, a good archery shop, somebody that's reputable there in your area. Get the strings and cables looked out. Change them every two or three years and uh, take care of your bow. God bless. Jesus saves. Slade, out of here.